thank you so much for those of you who have just been asking about my mom. Um, thank you for your prayers. She's had a cancer diagnosis, if you didn't know that. But she's doing okay. Um, she's in the hospital right now because she had a fever earlier this week, and they're just nursing her back up to some better health before continuing on with, with chemo. But uh, we're praying like crazy for her, and we've already seen God at work in the midst of the struggle. Um, seeing our community come around and take care of her, providing meals, watching out for them, just sending a quick note to say we're, we're with you, we're encouraging you, we're praying, that's been amazing. So thank you so much for those of you who have asked, and uh, yeah, we really do appreciate her. So uh, Gareth asked me to share a little devotional as well as talk about youth and young adults. Now, I don't know if you were with me last year when I came and spoke about Generation Z, or We Say Z, because that's the title of it. I know we're in Canada, we say Z. But Generation Z is our youngest generation that's kind of entering into adulthood and the teenage years right now. It's the generation that I'm working with very, very, very closely, and they're incredible. I love my job. I've been doing it for almost 10 years, and now I get to be with our young adults, which is pretty cool as well. And uh, they are a fabulous group of people that have such a passion for life and for making a difference in the world and for, for change, um, for caring for people, for the planet, and, uh, and yet they're also a generation that struggles with crippling anxiety, with, they struggle with identity, they struggle with truth. And, uh, and so my whole presentation last year was just around how we can come together as a church to care for this generation, to work with them, um, and to learn from them, because they teach me all the time um, about what it means to, to love people, to love God. Uh, they see things I don't, and, and it just kind of blows my mind. And then, you know, I'm not that old, but I still get on these social media platforms I have no idea about. But I just got on Be Real. Anyone heard of Be Real? No. It's kind of fun. It takes a picture. You get a prompt every single day. Everyone on the app gets a prompt every single day at the same time. You only get one a day, and you have two minutes to take a photo. But the camera, because if you've got a phone that has a camera on the front and the back, it takes photos of both sides. <laughs> so you've got, you've got a photo of, of whatever's out in front of you, but then to the uninitiated who didn't know what they were doing, you get the stupid look of your face yeah. on the other side. <laughs> and it shows up in the corner, and you're just like... Yeah, it's, it's pretty awesome, but it's a, it's a fun app, and it's neat to just see um, what people are doing at that moment each day. The excitement wears off, eventually you realize you're all just studying or sitting at a computer, and it's not that exciting anymore. But it's neat, because this generation is just seeking each other. They're seeking real life, they're seeking authenticity, um, and, uh, and they want to be real with each other and with, with their community uh, and with this world. And so I think... As I was just kind of um, wondering about what to share this morning, um, both for a devotional as well as an invitation for you, um, one of the things I was, I was thinking about was just, what does this generation need? Um, what are they seeking? And I think one of the greatest needs for them is for others to come alongside with them, to be in relationship. And there was just something about that word wisdom that kept coming up in my mind that they need wisdom of the Lord, of uh, those who have gone before, the wisdom of each other, but then they also give their own wisdom. And that's so different from intelligence, right? There's a lot of smart people out there that don't always have wisdom. I'm not going to name any because, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, God's wisdom, God's mind is something that I think this generation has struggled to see and struggled to come to terms with. There's all of these different ideologies in the world, all these different ideas that are powerful. They have an influence. They have a, a way of kind of making you think, oh, well, maybe that is true. Maybe that is the way I should be living. And it's not necessarily always God's ways. Um, and so as I was, yeah, just thinking about how we can be a, a church a community together, how we can care for this young generation. If you think of your grandkids, um, their peers, um, our youth, our young adults, how can we care for them? And one of, the, one of the things I know our young people are seeking, like I said, is relationship. And I know they're actually seeking relationship from other older people who have gone before, who can care for them. Right? It may not necessarily be their parents, 
but for another person who, who is older than them to embark their wisdom onto them, right? To, to give them their insights, to walk with them, sometimes even to give them a smack on the side of the head and say, smart enough. It is actually something they're searching for. Maybe not the smack part, but you get what I mean. And I think we as a church can come alongside each other. One of my, my hopes in, in terms of our young adults ministry is just to blur the lines between young adults and just church, right? It should just be church. We just, we are one body. Um, yes, it's, it's a ministry that, that seeks to bring in young people to equip them for what they're, they're, how they live their faith at that stage of life. But we can't just do that alone, just young people together, right? Uh, I don't want to say the blind leading the blind, but sometimes it does feel like that. Um, but we do need you. I hope you know that. I hope you know that you are needed. We need you as a church. Our young people need you. They need the wisdom of their, their loving parents and grandparents, their aunts and uncles. Um, they need that care. They need to know that they're loved unconditionally. Um, and so, yeah, I've got a few verses from Proverbs that I just kind of read through or went through earlier. And so I'd love to just read them. Um, and maybe we can just all meditate on what they, they are, what God is speaking to us through. Um, and then I'll tell you a little bit more about some of the practical ways that I could call you into getting involved with us. So if you have your Bibles and you want to go to Proverbs, go for it. And if you don't, that is okay. You can just feel free to close your eyes and listen to God's Word. Um, yeah, just thinking of, of what it means to trust in God, to, to seek his wisdom. Um, I went, yeah, I should go to Proverbs. So here's what I saw. In Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 3, it says, My child, never forget the things I have taught you. Store my commands in your heart. And if you do this, you will live many years and your life will be satisfied. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep within your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people. And you will earn a good reputation. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. Don't be impressed with your own wisdom. Instead, fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Then you will have healing for your body and strength for your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the best part of everything you produce. Then he will fill your barns with grain and your vats will overflow with good wine. My child, don't reject the Lord's discipline, and don't be upset when he corrects you. For the Lord corrects those he loves, just as a father corrects a child in whom he delights. And consider those words for you, too. Maybe it's been a little while since someone said you are a, a child, but consider what God thinks of you as well. You are his beloved child. You are so dear to him. You have value and worth because of who God says that you are. And our young people need to hear that too. But we can trust in the Lord with all our hearts. And while he has certainly given you wisdom and experience, um, I pray that you would seek after the Lord's will in everything. And as you do that, consider what, what might it look like for you to then share that wisdom God has given you with those around you in this life, whether it's our young people, whether it's your family, um, your spouse, Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. Later on in Proverbs 14, verse 12, this one just kind of stood out to me, considering our culture and our young people today. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. I think for a lot of our young people, there are, like I said, there's so many influences that seem wise, they seem intelligent, they seem like they are a really good way to go. They seem good. But in the end, they're actually not of God. And I think the enemy has done such a good job of distracting us from God by showing us a bunch of shiny things that really do look good, right? But they're so subtly twisted from what the truth is. It's a partial truth. And so how do we equip our young people? How do we seek after the Lord so that we're not also going down a path that seems right, but in the end actually doesn't lead us to Jesus and therefore leads us to death? Okay, one more.
And lastly, uh, uh, Proverbs 27. So this is a familiar one. 27, 17, it says, As iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Our young people are so desperate for intentional, genuine relationship. They want to be known. They want to know they're making a difference in this world. They want to be needed. And I just wonder what it might look like for you to come alongside and to care for those around you. Maybe it's our young people. To be a friend that sharpens that other friend. And so, as we consider what it means to seek the Lord's wisdom, um, to trust in Him, and then to impart that wisdom into the lives of those around us, to point out God's truths and God's ways as being the best thing for us, um, I want to invite you. I want to invite you to consider what it might look like to partner with me and with our youth leaders, our young adult leaders, um, because I know that many of your hearts is to care for our young people, is it not? I know you probably look at your grandkids' lives and you want to love them. You want to care for them. Maybe you've seen them follow some of the wisdom of the world and you know it's not leading them to Jesus. How do we do that? How do we show them the truth of Christ? How do we show them that God's love is indeed the best thing for them? Um, and how do we help them to discern how to follow Jesus how to, to know his truth rather than follow the ways of the world, even when they do seem like they're good. So one of my hopes and, and dreams, like I said, for young adults, for youth, is just that we would kind of blur the lines between those ministries and the rest of church. That the church would pour into them and that they would pour into the church. And that we would just be one big, happy family, right? Uh, and so I wonder, what might it look like for you to to join us. Maybe it means that you come and join us for our young adult gatherings on Sunday evenings. Um, Y'all are good at baking. If you want to make some snacks for us, I'm sure that the young adults would not be opposed to that. If that's something, if you've got a gift and a love for that, we would love for you to come and use that gift. Um, you know, if you've got um, if you've got experiences, stories from your past, photos. I was a hist I'm a history nerd, so I love seeing old photos from the past. And I know a bunch of our young adults do too. It is fascinating. If you've got stories you would want to share, we're trying to do one thing at Young Adults every time we gather called Spotlight, where we just bring someone up. We're going to ask them a few questions about who they are, their relationship with God, what's God been teaching you lately, just to get to know one another. Um, if you've got a gift, a passion, a skill, come and talk to me. Maybe we can use that within our ministries to, to bless each other. Would you consider what it means to bless our youth, our young adults? Um, and, uh, and maybe it means if you've got a home that could host a small group, maybe it's uh, if you've got a large home that would be open to having a bunch of us crash and have a worship night, um, we'd love to consider what that looks like as well. There's a whole bunch of ideas I've got in my mind. None of them are 100% fleshed in, but that's where I would rather work together and, and consider what that could look like. Um, but really, all of this... I hope is just pointing to, I want to call you into relationship with our young people. If you just want to show up at our young adult program, come. And as you learn about what they're going through, maybe it will even equip you to care for your grandkids better, uh, nieces and nephews, for those around you in your neighborhood. Um, and, uh, and, and maybe God's going to call you to something you weren't expecting. So that's my invitation, is just be in relationship. Come and join us. I want to get our youth more connected with you, Gareth, and with this group. Um, I know we're going to be serving at the Christmas banquet coming up, and that's always a blast. There's a couple years ago where I dared some of our youth to try and convince their table that they were from London. And so she did an English accent the whole time, and it was awesome. <laughs> she did it. She did it. One of uh, I said, just told her to do a British accent, I guess. And, and someone from the table was like, oh, where are you from? And she's like, uh... London. <laughs> but we just, we want to be with you. Let's be together. Let's be the church together. Um, let's care for one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. Can I pray for you guys, Gareth? You bet. Please do. I don't know who's coming up next, but yeah. Oh, Lord, thank you so much for who you are. Thank you for the fog this morning, the sunlight, the winter. Um, even though it can be a hard season, there's so much beauty and uh, I love that we have unique seasons. And uh, I know that uh, for a lot of us, we are in unique seasons of life, whether that's through uh, a diagnosis, retirement, uh, new, new grandkids, 
new kids, whatever it might be, God, uh, we thank you for those seasons. We thank you for the ways you are at work in the different stages of our lives. I pray that you would equip us, Lord, to do your will, uh, to care for this world, to care for each other. I pray that we would be the church. And so if you are calling us, Lord, if you are calling us to, uh, to take a step of faith, to take a risk, um, but to do that in, in faith that you're going to use us for your glory, um, would we do so? Would we take that risk? Would we take that step? Um, would you equip this incredible group of seniors? to care for those around them, for their grandkids, and if, uh, if you're calling them to partner with us in young adults ministry or in youth ministry, um, Lord, we want to see that happen. Um, would you give us unique ways to, to minister to our young people today? Um, stir up in our hearts the, the care and the compassion you have for this young generation. Lord, you've seen the pain they're in. You see the anxiety. You see the loneliness. You see the pressure they put on themselves to perform and to succeed. Lord, we know that's not of you. Would you help us to show them who you are? But Lord, we can't do that unless you show us who you are. And I pray we would come to love you on a deep, deep level. And out of the overflowing of that, that closeness to you, uh, would you use us to impact those around us? So yeah, God, we seek you in all this. Thank you for your wisdom, for your word. I pray that we would not lean on our own understanding, but that we would seek your will in all we do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.